Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today is a good day. We are looking at the price of Theta right now, and Theta is continuing to pump up the jams. I mean, if you look now, we are starting to um, creep on up, um, starting to challenge potentially the 90 cent area. Question is, when are we going to get a real pullback? When... Uh, what targets can we expect before the pullback or potentially is the pullback starting now or are we just going to continue to pump up the jams until we hit even higher targets so we're going to talk about that um, right now theta is sitting about 89 and a half cents and basically the common theme here is right this is the bottom here um, we come on up and we start making these little bases. We level up, make another base. We level up, make another base. We level up, make another base, right? It just continues um, to mark up, right? Mark up phase into another accumulation base, right? You can call it a box. You can call it a range. You can call it a base, same thing. So we're leveling up into a new base, leveling up into a new base. And this is good because you don't want it to just, you know, for example, you don't want it to just do this because what comes up most likely comes down. So, um, you know, it's good that the price comes up, stalls out, accumulates, comes up, stalls out, accumulates, right? This is called sustainability. We want it. We want the price to do this because it gives it more sustainability. It get, it's basically you're creating levels of support, right? Now keep in mind, this is the 30 minute chart. When I zoom out, it's going to look like a straight line, right? But just to show you um, the detail, uh, we're looking at the 30 minute chart. So let me zoom out and let's start from the daily here. And let me take all that off. And what we can see is a beautiful breakout. And it's not confirmed yet because the daily hasn't closed, right? We still have four hours to go. But basically, what I was talking about in the previous video is, uh, I don't know if it was the previous video, but one of the videos was getting above this swing high, which is um, 85 cents, this 85, 86 cent area. And it just went right through it like butter, right? So it sliced through like butter, and that's a good thing. So the question is now, um, this becomes sort of less of a possibility. So in the previous videos, I talked about a few possibilities. And one of those possibilities was coming down to retest this breakout area, right? So we had this um, accumulation schematic, right? Wyckoff accumulation. And we were talking about um, the spring right in here. I said, look, this looks to me like a Wyckoff accumulation schematic. We had our first test, right? We had our second test of the resistance without necessarily taking um, that high out. And then we developed our beautiful spring pattern, in which case it broke right? It broke the, um, the resistance. So right there. So you can see, let me zoom in. You can see, right? So support, 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 right? We broke support. Sorry, I said resistance, but support. We broke support and everybody goes, okay, we broke support. I'm going short. Money pours into the market. What happens? Whales basically eat it up. And this is why whales do this, right? The market makers, because they need to fill their positions. 
And in order to fill a position, you have to have liquidity. So in a normal range, there's not a lot of liquidity, not a lot of volume, right? But when you break the range to the downside, right? And even better, you close below. Um, everybody believes, okay, this is the time to go short because we broke, you know, we broke the range. Let's go short. We're, we're going to continue rocking to the downside. So everybody puts their orders in, liquidity comes in, and the whales say, nope, this right here was the spring. So, um, yeah, this was the spring. And uh, we, we basically reacted, right? So let me put the example up. So right here is the example of Wyckoff accumulation, in case you didn't know. Um, so matching it up on the screen here, the, see, that's the thing. The important thing in this is trying to identify things, right? If you can identify it, then it makes life a lot easier, right? Because, um, you know, a lot of people, um, don't really, uh, know what's going on. And, and a lot of times I don't even know what's going on, but, these examples right here really help out, right? Because then you can sort of, you know, match it up and see if, if that's what's going on. And that's the cool thing about Wyckoff is it's pretty easy to read, right? So, and one of the things is it's happening at the bottom of the range, right? So look how long we've been crashing. I mean, look at this big monster down move. We started coming um, and we started... Uh, coming down and started start, sort of rounding out, right? And in this bottom of the curb, we then developed the Wyckoff, right? So before I've said, you know, we had a couple Wyckoff accumulations, right? We had a Wyckoff accumulation in, in this area here, this small one. We have a bigger one in here, right? And then down here, is the beginning of the Wyckoff, right? So this was the first example down in here. So basically, um, what's what's going on now? What's happening at this moment, right? Well, we got our spring right in here, and that's the same thing here. We come down, we break the liquidity, we break this low, and then we take it on up. And then we come to the range. Um, so notice the example here. We had it playing around on top of the support. This data was so bullish that it didn't even need to do that. It just continued rocking it to the upside, which is um, a good thing to see. I was actually expecting, you know, some sort of at least consolidation, for example, um, right here. I was thinking, okay, we broke out, so let's play around a little bit and then continue. But obviously, it just continued to rock to the upside, which is fine by me. No complaints over here. So there's our Wyckoff accumulation. Um, we broke out. So one of the things um, I was talking about in the video as well is this trend line right here. So this could be a good area for the price to start finding some, some resistance, right? And perhaps even a pullback. Um, since we're coming from the bottom and we went straight up with no pullback, it's going to be quite difficult to break that. It's going uh, to be difficult to break that, but it, it, it certainly can, right? But what normally would happen is you come up to the resistance sort of cup into it again knock on the door sort of build a bigger base right another base and then come out and break out so when you break out you could come down and back test the base right and then continue marching higher that's one example the other example would be um we still have to come down here, which is not really likely because we broke above this resistance. So since we broke above that resistance, um, 
chances are we're not going to um, come down and retest this area. But it definitely could happen, right? So we broke out. We could come down here and retest the top of this range and then continue marching higher. And that would actually be healthy, right? That would actually be a healthy thing. Um, coming up here and getting this pullback, we have a one, two, and then we go for that monster third wave, right? So, for example, remember I talked about the spring and price coming just above it, right? Or below it, and then it reverses, right? Well, what if that's happening again, but reverse, right? So the price is breaking above this resistance. What if it is the same thing, but reversed, right? Um, not to say that it's going to crash, but I'm saying, you know, we need, we need some type of pullback, right? Um, the question is, when does that come? Well, a lot of ideas come around this area right here so this to me which is about 96 cents i think is a good target to have if you're trading if you're hodling you know hodl but remember this is not financial advice i could be totally wrong um you know this is just ideas opinions so the next area of resistance would be about that 97, 96, 7. Yeah, right, yeah, right about there. That's a good area um, to consider taking profit if you're trading. If you're not, like I said, just hodl. And that's probably the best way to do it. Um, so if I take this trend line here and I put it down here. That actually gets us above, if I'm more conservative and I'm touching there, that actually gets us right in there. So there's some confluence in this area right in here. So I would look for that to be our short-term target. Now we could be stalled out now and we can start um, correcting. But chances are we're probably gonna come up and tag um, the 90 cent region so let's say okay so now we have a couple ideas number one let's say we come up and we tag this 90 cent area right in here then what let's say that's the case if we come up and we tag that area what could then potentially happen after that well, basically, that would complete um, a five-wave move, right? You can't see it. I'm on the daily, but, you know, you have one, two, three, four. Now we're in the middle of the fifth wave. So then you would want an ABC correction, right? Some type of ABC correction. So what would the target be for that ABC correction? Well, if I pull a Fibonacci up and I take it from the bottom, and let's say we potentially come up to this line right up at that 97 96 cent area i would then look for a retracement if it's it really could come in between here right in here so that would be sort of the area to look for as a pullback right so if we start climbing up here and we have a little more room to go I would look for an A, B, C, and then I would look for a monster, monster continuation. But we need the pullback. We want this to happen. As a hodler, right, as an investor, there's nothing better than watching the price go up. But understanding that if it continues to go up and up and up and up and up, that's when it gets that's when I get scared. That's when I get nervous because when things get overextended without creating a new base of support, it's not sustainable. It comes up and then it comes right back down, right? It's not sustainable. So you need 
these ABC corrections in order to continue rocking the price in the right direction, right? So that would probably be my primary idea, which would be a 618 or 50% retracement. So somewhere in here. Now that's contingent on us stopping up here, right? If we stop up here, if we don't, and we break above this, which is a dollar, I would say between a dollar twenty and a dollar thirty, right? If we break above this area, then you know things start to change a little bit, right? So let's talk about that. If we continue to sort of come up here and break this then you're going to want to hold above it. You're not going to really want to come back down, right? Because technically this would be, you know, your range. You still have another top up here you need to work through. But basically, um, when you break above this range, you're going to want to hold above it. You're going to want to um, hold above it and not necessarily consolidate through price, but perhaps consolidate through time and then continue um, rocking to the upside. That's not to say um, that we can't still get another 50% or a 618 retrace, right? Um, it really depends. It really depends what Bitcoin's doing, um, what the rest of the market is doing. But at the moment, there's nothing to be um, fearful about at all because we are, I mean, look at this candle, we're bullish. Where there's there's no um, sense of weakness at all. So anytime you get and remember this is the first wave too, right? So given that this is the first wave, we're gonna even if it's a correction, right? So if it's a correction, you're gonna have one, two, three, right? You're still needing that third wave. If it's an impulse, you have one, two three, four, five, right? Which would then mean A, B, C, and then continuation, right? So either way, I still see another wave to the upside. But the big thing is, is we need that correction coming soon. And it really depends on, on where it comes. Now, it could be incredibly bullish, and I can show you why. I'm going to show you a fractal. So this is the price of Bitcoin. I don't know if you remember this, but this is the, the fractal um, back when we had that first top, and it sort of made this type of pattern. So looking at theta, it looks not extremely identical, but the same concept, the same idea, right? We have that, that fractal. So putting them side by side, this is what I'm sort of looking at here. So in this case, right, let me take a screenshot. In this case, um, you have this move here, this move here, right? You have this move here this move here and then you have this little move here and this little move here right little move here little move here so you have that same type of fractal pattern um not sure what this pattern is called but it is essentially wyckoff right and you can notice this is descending right descending and then what do we see now right you've seen this little uh this little roundabout right you see this little roundabout and then what do we see a breakout and what do we see happening a breakout so we're right in the middle of this breakout right now and according to the bitcoin fractal we not only break above 90 cents but we break above um, I believe that's a dollar twenty area right in here. 
So basically, let me take everything off. So this wave right here would be the equivalent of this right there. Right? And then we continue marching it to the upside. So that is, in my opinion, one of the most bullish ideas in the short term, in the, in the medium to short term. Long term, macro, always bullish, right? Um, short term, ex you know, extremely short term, right? We could have little pullbacks, little stall outs. But overall, I'm looking at um, this fractal here, which would be, right? You come down here and you completely break out. And you don't even have to back test the line, right? So notice um, with the Bitcoin fractal, we came right right in there. So if that would be identical, it would be right in here, right? So we come out, we break out, we back test this line, just like we did here, and then we continue on. So what would that look like on the actual chart? This is a screenshot, but what would that look like on the actual chart? So I like this image. I'm going to actually save it. So it's saved. And then I'm going to show you one more. Look at this. This is actually uh, Ford. This is Ford, a stock. And it's got that same type of thing going on here. So you notice here, I'll take a screenshot. You have... Um, one, two, three, four, go. Same thing, right? One, two, three, four, go. Okay. So, same thing here. You have one, two, three, four, go. Right? So that's... That's uh, it's looking good as that is start starting to bottom out here. So I say um, we're still bullish. Um, there's a lot could happen in the short term, but looking at these fractals, looking at the two Wyckoff accumulation patterns that I've been talking about um, going back before Halloween, um, before this um, sort of pump was going on, there was an idea that we could come back down and break the low. But since we took out, or I should say, since we are taking out, right? The candle has three hours and 45 minutes. Since we took this out, it becomes less probable that we come down and make another low. So remember the, the Ford um, stock, you have one, two, three, four, and then we're going, right? And then the same with the Bitcoin chart. Um, so the Bitcoin chart, we actually came up above this area, right? And then the Bitcoin chart came down and back tested around there. And then it continued, it continued to rocket to the upside. So this would be, um, my most bullish case right here which means we're not even done with this wave yet we're probably like halfway there uh, maybe a little more than halfway there so the target according to the fractal so if this idea plays according to the fractal then we could be looking at uh between a dollar 30 and maybe a dollar 50. so I think um, I think we're we're actually in a good spot here. We're at the beginning of the wave, right? We're in the beginning of the wave. When you zoom out, let me go to the weekly chart. When you zoom out, we're still in its infancy, right? We're still we're only barely right there. I mean, look how much excitement is pouring into the market, and we've only moved not even an inch, right, relative to this monster. Um, down move. So that would be um, my bullish idea. And 
I guess, let me try to look at this a different way. So the bearish idea obviously would be um, one, two, three, four, and now we're getting five. So we're creating this sort of, uh, this diagonal, right? Where it's sort of contracting in here. And then we, we break out. That could definitely happen. The, the way that becomes invalidated is if we go back to that Bitcoin fractal, in which case we break above this and we continue um, rocking it to the upside. So either way, I'm, I'm, my target here is at least a retracement. So let me pull this here, pull this down here. So I want to see at least a 50% retracement um, between the 618 and the 50% line. Being conservative, right? So between $8, $8.50, $8.40 up to um, $12, right? If we start breaking above $13, then I'm going to have to treat it like, okay, we're in a new bull run and we're, we're starting to... Um, we're, we're, we're starting a new bull run, right? So anything can happen. We're still at the bottom of the range, right? So if we do come up here, this would be the big decider, right? Do we then come down for a C wave? In which case, you know, this would be one, two, um, three, four, five. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. That would be the case. I would just treat this as um, wave one, and now we're in wave two, right? And we continue rocking it to the upside. So wave one, and if wave two could be an A, B, C, but the, the issue with that is wave two is not proportional with wave one, right? So you... In technical analysis, you want things to be sort of proportional, right? Um, so if this is wave one, wave two, then you're looking for wave three. But if it comes up and retraces, it comes down, then you're going to have a much, you're going to have an A, B, C, which is going to be a much larger um, bear market, right? But no matter what, we're still looking for this B wave. Either the B wave is going to turn into a new bull run or the B wave is going to stall out at retracements and then come down for the C leg. Um, if I had to choose, I'm thinking A, B, C is too big. I think it's too big for this little wave here, which by the way is not a little wave in percentage terms. Um, so we'll have to see. So we have to decide that when the time comes. But in the meantime, let's just focus on this range here. I think we have a good shot at getting into this yellow box, right? Right in here. But for some reason we don't, then I'm looking at this trend line. Now, when you take it from the weekly chart and I, you know, as you, trend lines can go through the wicks. They just can't go through the bodies, right? They can't go through the bodies of the channel. I'm sorry, the, the bodies of the, um, the trend line cannot go through the bodies of the candle. So we want to see um, the weekly chart close above this line. So we have four days left, right? On Sunday, the weekly chart is going to end. If we can break above which we already are but if we can close above this black line then this is the target right so just because we break above it doesn't mean we can't pull back right so basically um right so this is the weekly chart let's say we break above right we get almost to the yellow box but then we pull back Right, we pull back and we maybe back test this area and then we get to the box, right? That would still, it would still um, 
count, right? Obviously. So look out for a correction. Um, you know, going back to that Bitcoin fractal, we essentially didn't have, we had little tiny corrections on the smaller time frame, but all in all, it was one straight shot above, right? And then we had this pullback that sort of back tested this area and then we continued rocking it to the upside. So those are two ideas, right? So idea number one, you come up a little further um, to this line right here, about 96 cents. We come up to that line. I mean, you got to understand too, this is, this is one, two, three, four. So we're on our four green candles in a row um doesn't mean you can't get five six and seven but the chances start getting less and less you need some sort of at least consolidation or some type of um accumulation to continue the price right um but remember when you zoom all the way out we're still not even moved an inch so when you zoom in, it, it's sort of deceiving, right? When you zoom all the way in, it looks like, okay, we need a pullback. When you zoom all the way out, it's like, no, we, we barely even moved, right? So you kind of have to find a balance between those two. And I try my best to, to, to be conservative, but at the same time, have a balance of, of where we are. So... Um, still looking for this move to come all the way up and eventually take out this high of a dollar. What was that again? A dollar 24 uh, between 96 cents and a dollar 25. So that is the zone that I am looking for. So basically, that's the goal. That is our goal as theta community, theta holders is to get above this zone. Once we do that, then it confirms, in my opinion, that we don't need to come down here. So we don't need to go one, two, three, four, five, because we would have broken this, right? And then continued higher. So that's it. So basically I wanna talk about one more thing, one more idea. And sort of this rounding bottom. So we have this rounding bottom, but it's only halfway there, right? If I go straight up, it doesn't really make sense. But if I continue rounding about, then it makes more sense. We want to see a nice rounded bottom. Okay, so how do we get that rounded bottom? Well, first off, I'm starting to see, and I, I saw this before, but I didn't want to say anything because I'm not too sure, but... This to me is starting to look like an inverse head and shoulder. So you have your shoulder, you have your head, and now we're coming up to the resistance and then we're going to get another shoulder. So, and then we come up, maybe back test the line and then we 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 march it to the upside. So, if I so basically I gave a few ideas there and in my opinion this idea is one of the the top ideas and basically all the ideas are reminiscent of each other they're all sort of in the same category with just little minor tweaks right and basically the differences between the ideas is where the pullbacks come in where the resistances you know stall out the price so I would think, right, so basically the Bitcoin fractal that we showed um, has it coming up here, back testing the price, and then continue higher, right? That's, um, that was that one idea. Let me draw that one more time. So, so price moves up. Remember the Bitcoin fractal? We back test the line and then we continue higher. Then the second option, obviously, 
inverse head and shoulders. There's your shoulder. There's your head. We're still working on the head, right? We still ha we still have another. Um, let's see where we are here. God dang, we still have another forty four percent to go on theta. So, wow, we're still like, you know, we're we're about halfway there, not even halfway there. So we're still creating the head, right? And we want to make it back up to here. So this is the neckline. We come down, we finish out that shoulder, and then we continue higher. See, that makes sense to me. The reason why it makes sense is because there's more of a rounded bottom. So you see, here's the, so think of it like a half circle, right? The half circle is a bottom. So we're only halfway there. Right. So if the price just shot up now, it wouldn't look right. Right. We want to have that rounded bottom. So the rounded bottom would mean we have this shoulder coming in, continuing um, marching up the price. So there you go. Um, what do you think? Are you guys bullish or are you guys bearish? Um, I could take a look at Theta Fuel uh, real quick. But before I do that, I want to emphasize this right here. So we last week, we confirmed the breakout, right? And I st stated that we could have a big reaction, right? So this candle closed above this long-term downward resistance line. Um, we closed the week above. Then the following week, right? So we had the confirmation of the weekly close. Then the following week, we're like, okay. We got the close, it's confirmed, so now more continuation. And that's what we're getting this week, right? Question is, um, when are we gonna when are we gonna stall out, right? And I think right around there. And in the short term, around 96 cents. So something like that that's 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 basically the primary idea if we do the bitcoin idea where we break out and we back test that's fine too that's that's fine too but it would look more if that occurred you know you're, you're trending down 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 and then sharp reversal it looks kind of like the nike symbol right when you have that nike symbol it oftentimes leads to retracement so you're going down 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 with a sharp move up so it looks like a check mark right so a check mark is usually an indication of a retracement before more down if we have a more of a rounded bottom where we have this inverse head and shoulders and we create and we um create more volume profile on this side of the curve then we have a better chance at making an all-time high, just like down here, right? Down here, we have this rounded bottom. It didn't just stop from here, which reminds me, I want to show you the fractal now. So, so for example, if we're comparing this fractal to this here, what does that mean? So let me take a bars pattern. And I'm gonna take it. Um, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna match it up with where we are now. So I'm not necessarily matching it up with price necessarily. I'm matching it up with time. So from a time perspective, um, we're we're not quite there yet, right? We still have a little ways to go. Um, so, you know, there's your shoulder, there's your head, and then you can see here that was the C19 dump right there, which was our, our right shoulder. Now, it's not going to come way down there, I don't think, right? But um, 
nonetheless, we're still looking for some type of uh, shoulder to come in or some type of pullback. Now, if I kind of scrunch it in a little bit, it looks pretty good, right? So we have our top here. We have our top here. Then we, we sort of wane down, right? We wane down. And then what happens with the price? We pump up, right? Same thing with the fractal. We pump up. And then we sort of wane down again, right? And then we sort of pump up. We wane down again, and we sort of pump up. And then we have that final little dump, and then we go. We have that final dump, and then we go. So there you go, guys. That, that right there is probably the most exciting thing of this video is looking at this right here. So according to this fractal, we're ready to go. And when I mean go, I mean really go, 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 right? Obviously pullbacks, right? So looking at this fractal, what did it do? So if I take um, the fractal, and I sort of match it up here. So it, it doesn't really work right because you have this, um, this C19 dump, which makes it a little off. But the whole thing looks pretty darn good, right? So we could see something, we could see something like this before making a decision. Do we come down or do we break out? So that would be the big, big, big decision, right? But in the meantime, we still have plenty, plenty of room to the upside. So also this fractal is sort of the same as that one Bitcoin fractal. Remember the Bitcoin fractal, I said, we can come up here, right? So price comes up here, we back test this breakout area and then we go. So that could definitely, um, definitely happen. So just to recap, option number one, inverse head and shoulders. Option number two, we break out, we back test, we go. According to this fractal and the Bitcoin fractal. Option number three, we start pulling back relatively soon, which would be in here. We come up in here, maybe flag out in here for a little while, and then we continue rocking it to the upside. So, which would just be reminiscent of this head inverse head and shoulders, right? It'd be kind of the same thing. So there, those are the options. Um, what do you guys think? Are you guys bullish? Are you guys bearish? I mean, we're sitting at 89 cents. Last time I did a video, I don't remember. I think it was 74 cent area. Um, so it's, it's looking, it's looking incredible. Um, and, and the best part is, we're at the beginning. There's so much more potential, potential to come, right? It, it has a ton of potential because of where it is. You know, if I, for example, let's go to the monthly chart just to have a quick look. I mean, that looks, that looks pretty good to me. I mean, that looks like it's ready to go, right? You have your base, your concrete foundation, you have your monster flagpole that's planted into the support, into the foundation. And then you have your monster bull flag. And you can see we're starting to break out right now. So let's take a look at Theta Fuel. So here's Theta Fuel. And the reason I don't do too much Theta Fuel is because it's basically going to act the same as um, Theta, right? They're both very correlated to each other. So anything I say in regards to theta is going to happen more than likely with um, theta fuel. So you can see, I mean, we're basically identical. So um, it, there's a little, little differences in here, right? So for example, um, 
this could be your 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 shoulder this could be your head and now we're working on that right shoulder in which case that would make things more bullish right because according to theta right we we didn't have that that right shoulder but according to theta fuel we do so maybe theta fuel is telling the story and we're ready to go now in which case um you remember you have the bitcoin fractal you have the theta fractal and you have the theta fuel inverse head and shoulder those are three reasons why we could break out back test the top of the range just like theta and break out versus um the other which would be the the complete rounded bottom which would be one and then the inverse head and shoulders which would be two so you're at a three to two right so uh, three to two odds of, of where we're going to pull back. So I'm looking at data fuel. I'm saying this thing is bullish. Um, you know, we, we, we have our inverse head and shoulders here. And then we also have Wyckoff, right? We have the Wyckoff area where this is the, the range right we have our first test our second to the um, support we have our third and then we have our spring phase and the spring phase actually broke below this low and now we're starting to accelerate so if I had to guess we're gonna come up here like this bounce up and go that's it that's that is my primary idea for theta, fuel, and theta. Um, so not, it doesn't have to happen that way, but that is the idea when you're looking at white coffee accumulation. Actually, now that I'm really looking at it, theta fuel is much more clear to me bec from the white coffee perspective. I mean, you have this beautiful white coffee accumulation pattern. Um, I mean, look at this. Sorry for the video. It's, I know it's long. Um, been, uh, under the weather. I don't know if it's like a cold or a flu or, or what, but I'm kind of a little sluggish today. So apologies. But anyway, we have this pump. We have this pump. We have this back to support. We have back to support. Then we have this second pump right without taking out necessarily this high we have this second pump without taking out this high then we have our long uh, uh, elongated spring right this long spring that comes down same thing here we have this long spring that comes down then it breaks below support it breaks that guy right there same thing here the spring comes down it breaks this low here then what does it do it has a reaction to the upside. And what is it doing now? It's having a reaction to the upside. So basically, you have one, two, three, four, going on five. You have five points of confirmation that this is a Wyckoff accumulation, which gives me five times more probabilities that we're going to break above seven cents, eight cents. So... I see in the not too distant future, Theta Fuel easily breaking above seven to eight cents. So being conservative, say seven cents. So I'm looking at seven cents target um, for Theta Fuel. Yeah, it actually, now that I'm looking at it, it actually looks much more clear. Because remember, Theta right theta is sort of the same type of pattern but it's it's sort of weighing down like this it's sort of slanted whereas theta fuel is more in an orderly way so it looks like this is theta fuel right or sorry theta and then this is um beta fuel so it looks more it looks more clear to me um, telling the story. 
So I don't know. This is very bullish to me. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think we're going to continue rocking it to the upside? Or do you think, you know, this is just going to be a one, two, three. We're coming up for four and then five. I hope not. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. Right. But uh, yeah, let me take a, a screenshot of that. So just looking at the daily really quick, I mean, we are running right into resistance, right? So you have you have support, 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 and now it's resistance. And now we're coming right up it right up um, to the resistance again. So we really want to get above this area. But since we came up, you know, in a straight shot, we could, you know, maybe play around here for a little bit before breaking up so we could come down and back test this area break out or we consolidate then break out but either way the direction is up it doesn't matter what happens in the short term because if you're hodling whatever right the the, the idea here is to tr figure out the trend where is the trend going right for the longest time we've been going down but zoom out even further we're in a bull run. We're in a big macro bull run. I mean, the same going with um, theta, right? You have this impulse to the upside. One, two, three, four, five, right? So this is one wave, one impulse wave, and then you have this corrective move to the downside. And then this corrective move is sort of rounding out with a Wyckoff accumulation pattern, with the spring, and with the reaction. So we want to break out and continue rocking it to the upside. So that's, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. We are incredibly bullish. It takes time. Remember, this is the weekly chart. So just because what I drew doesn't mean it happens to tomorrow or next week or even in the next couple months. It could take time. But the idea here is let it continue to take time. One of my favorite quotes was from Warren Buffett. He said, the stock market is a device from transferring money from the impatient to the patient. And that's the same thing with crypto, right? It's the same thing with cryptocurrency. Crypto is a psychological game of buy and sell, fear and greed patience and impatience it it's an emotional thing so for example today you woke up you saw the theta price up seven percent how did you feel you felt great you felt euphoric right and that's that's the whole thing learning how to rein those emotions in that's when you're starting to be you know more of a precise trader which i don't recommend by the way most people who try to trade they fail i failed so many times i can't even count right? But does that mean you give up? No, it means you need to figure out a different strategy, right? And for me, and my best recommendation is to just hodl, right? Hodling, not a lot of leverage. I would probably use no leverage at all. The most leverage I ever used was 3x. Um, 3 to 5x is the maximum I would ever use. And even then, I don't like to use it, right? Because um, oftentimes you get liquidated and it's not fun. Remember, you know, when you wake up and you see on the news, $200 million liquidated on Binance, 50 million. You don't want to be in that category. If you're a hodler and you buy theta crypto, you take it off the exchange. I believe in holding your own keys, right? Not your keys, not your crypto. Don't hold your, your crypto on an exchange unless you're maybe have some on there ready to go, maybe you're staking it, whatever. But um, overall, I am a big believer in holding it on a ledger, on a Trezor, on Exodus, uh, on MetaMask, uh, some type of wallet where you're in control of your private keys, right? So um, if the market does come down, you don't get liquidated, right? That's the whole thing. If you're in possession of your own coins, nobody can take that away from you. 
Nobody on planet Earth can take away your coins because they are in your possession. So if they're on an exchange or if they're in a the futures market or if they're in an ETF, I like to trade ETFs, right? They're like derivatives of the real asset. So for example, um, you can trade theta three, right? So it's theta three L. So instead of theta, it's theta three L, which means three X long. So if I buy $100 worth of theta and theta goes up 5%, then I made 5%. But if I buy $100 worth of theta 3L, then that means that position went up 5, 10, 15%. So it went up three times the amount. So, but also it works against you. If theta goes down 2%, you lost 2% on your theta, right? But if it goes down on theta 3L, right? Then you lost two, four, 6%. So it's a big, big risk, right? You have to really know what you're doing. And I wouldn't really recommend hodling that kind of stuff, right? It's not, you definitely don't want to hodl something in the ETF or derivatives unless you're, you know, you got in at the very, very bottom and you're okay with um, with the risk. But for most of us, it's basically you buy the, the real asset, you hold it in your possession, and you don't care if it does this because you know eventually it's going to do this, right? Even though I think we have a good shot at doing this, just like the Bitcoin fractal that I showed. So there's Bitcoin. That's what Bitcoin did. Same thing, right? And now I think Theta and Theta Fuel is in that same position. So I'm sorry, guys, the video got too long. Um, like I said, I'm not up, not feeling good. Um, got a bug. Don't know what it is, but uh, feeling a little slow today, a little sluggish, but the party must go on. Theta's up 7%. I thought, you know what? It's a good idea to, to make a video, update the community. If you're watching, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a big YouTube guy. I'm just a regular guy who thought, you know what? Let me make some videos. I think I can provide a little bit of insight from my perspective. Um, a lot of the videos out there, you know, they're like 10, 15 minutes long and they get right to the point and and they talk about it. But that's not really my style. My style is more going in depth of of crypto and, and trying to figure out the different possibilities and, you know, not a five, 10 minute video, but in a in a video that, you know, has more details, you know, the details matter, in my opinion. And um, I don't know where this channel is going to go, right? I'm going to continue making videos and continue posting. Um, I, I don't know. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. You can feel free to follow me on Facebook. Um, just type my name in. You can see it there. And um, yeah, basically, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Please, if you can, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you on the next video. Remember, hodl.